The nutrition landscape is moving beyond the calorie model with the advent of emerging approaches such as those that focus on gut health and mental health. I know that's why you're here. We've introduced a food group system to keep this journey simple, actionable, memorable, transportable, and sustainable. Today, we'll dive into the macronutrient model and discuss its pros and cons and then merge it with the Wise Mind Nutrition system. Macronutrients include carbohydrates, protein, and fats. Ethanol found in alcoholic beverages can also be considered a macronutrient. However, it's not essential, therefore won't be discussed in this context. Consider reducing or eliminating if possible. The potential benefits of using a macronutrient model have been well described in contexts such as weight management and athletic performance. But even there, conclusions support the notion that nutrition interventions should be individualized rather than based on any specific macronutrient prescription. The era of personalized nutrition is here. We're not calculating macronutrient distributions because we're focusing on nutrition to improve your mental health, which can also include how much cognitive effort you put into food. Math-centric approaches to nutrition are also associated with eating disorders, which is the worst possible outcome. Meanwhile, the macronutrient model remains widely accepted and has some definite utility worth discussing. Many of the nutrition apps on the marketplace help consumers calculate calorie needs based on a weight or fitness related goal. And once a daily calorie target has been established, then a target macronutrient profile is determined. Evidence-based targets are generally carbohydrates, 45 to 65% of total energy intake, protein 10 to 35% of total energy intake, which could depend on preference and activity level, and fats, 20 to 35% of total energy intake. Today, many popular approaches go much lower in carbs, and there is some scientific support for these approaches, but not without controversy. Going too low in carbs can create problems for some people, including binging or even obsessing with food. Instead of focusing on what you should go low in, let's start focusing on what you should go high in. Using the carbohydrate macronutrient as a combined category can be misleading. For example, low carb dietary patterns with animal derived protein and fat sources have been associated with higher mortality, whereas those that favor plant-based proteins and fats have been associated with lower mortality. So you can see there's a need for nuance. And conclusions from these studies depend on the outcome of interest, whether it be all-cause mortality, blood sugar management, cardiovascular risk factors, or binge eating. I totally understand how findings from nutrition epidemiological research continue to stimulate disagreement and debate. Our hope is that this program will put an end to the nutritional confusion. It is important to achieve balance across all macronutrient categories for optimizing mental health and beginning the process of trusting your hunger and fullness cues. Meanwhile, we believe that an overemphasis on macronutrients can lead to suboptimal food choices. For example, by aiming for specific macronutrient targets, eaters may get the impression that all macronutrients are created equal. Achieving a carbohydrate target through refined grains and fruit juice is just not the same thing as achieving it through beans and starchy vegetables. The fiber that's found in carbohydrates is an important and often overlooked part of this picture. Achieving a fat target through refined oils and low quality animal products is not the same as achieving it through nuts, seeds, avocados, coconuts, and olives. Achieving a protein target through protein powders and bars is not the same as achieving it through salmon, whole eggs, and lentils. Hopefully you're getting the point that math-based approaches to nutrition are tired and falling out of favor. To conceptualize macronutrients, we recommend classification based on the following. Carbohydrates include fruits, fibrous vegetables, whole grains, and beans. Protein includes animal-based dairy, animal-based proteins, meat alternatives, protein powder, and beans, nuts, and seeds. Fat includes animal-based proteins, dairy, and alternative dairy products, nuts, seeds, avocados, coconut, olives, and cooking oils such as avocado, coconut, and olives. We'll be discussing each food group in much more detail, as well as other recommendations for targeting high fiber carbohydrates and the best sources of protein and fat for mental wellness. To simplify and summarize, 
If you eat from all six food groups, on average, at least twice per day, you'll achieve a balanced macronutrient profile without focusing on the math. We hope you'll find this approach liberating and sustainable over your lifespan. You don't need to count in order to thrive. Abandon the math and experience food freedom. Oosh.